Good morning and welcome to The Art of Composition. Thanks for joining me today. I really appreciate it. So today I want to talk about a section in my user's guide that I pretty much always skim over because it's a bit long. And it's about the 15 myths that I came up with about composition in art and photography that I've seen through the years. As mentioned before, I've been researching this information for 12 years now. And I've come across a lot of information online in my own research, reading books, etc. And I came up with this list. I, I thought I would go through the list because I have updated some of the information on the rule of thirds because when I first started learning this information, I was pretty down on the rule of thirds. And it really wasn't a fair approach to the concept. When I started learning the harmonic armature, I realized that the rule of thirds, it's a legitimate concept and I have to give it the respect that it deserves. And you can learn more about that in my uh, in my user's guide, in my video lectures, etc. So I updated some of that information on the rule of thirds. But I thought what I would do is just go through this list and make a few comments that should help the artist and photographer understand some of these myths that I came up with. If for some reason you have any more that you want to contribute, you can always drop me an email. I'm always interested in what others think. So let me get started. All right, the first one, composition in art is intuitive or random. There's no doubt why I put this in the number one slot. This is the most common comment that I see online when I'm talking to artists and photographers, etc. Composition in art is not intuitive in any way. And I'm not saying that as an artist you can't take a good photograph if you don't you know, if you haven't studied composition before, of course you can take a good photograph. And in drawing and painting, you might come up with a good composition here and there. But the reality is, if you want to create a consistent portfolio, if you want to create the best work you possibly can, you have to learn design composition. You can't get around it. And I've talked about the differences between applying composition and drawing and painting as opposed to photography, but the reality is still the same. You have to learn it. And it's just not something that is intuitive. It's like any other art skill when it comes to classical skill-based art. It's something you need to study. It's something you need to practice. And it's something you need to learn. All right. Number two, composition can't be taught. I. This one's interesting to me because it it literally makes no sense. I don't understand why any artist would think you can't teach this. If there's information out there, and there's a lot of information on my website alone when it comes to the topic of composition, if the information's out there and you can find it, you can learn it. It's, a, it's an absurd comment. It's, it's, it doesn't make any sense at all because if you can learn any other skill in art, there's no reason you can't learn composition. And I actually came across this from a photography teacher online that was telling, he worked at a college and he was telling his students that it can't be taught. And I, my first thought was, okay, you're not doing your job first of all. Okay. Because you're, you're telling your students that they can't learn something that is clearly learnable as long as they have the right information. It's doing a disservice to the art community, to the photography community and so on. And I, and I, I do see this one and this deserved the second spot in my list as well because it's one of those reoccurring themes that I see that tends to go along with the first one. All right, number three, some people are born with the gift of composition while others are not. Again, I see this a lot on photography websites. Nothing could be further from the truth. <laughs> no, nobody is born with the gift of composition. Now, there are photographers or even artists that draw and paint that can compose a little bit better than somebody else but the trained artist that's trained in composition will always far surpass anybody that's not period drawing painting photography etc they're not going to be able an untrained artist is not going to be able to, to compete with a trained a highly skilled trained artist in the area of composition so we're, we're not born with this stuff whether it's design or any other art skill, you're not born with it. You have to learn it and you have to, you have to practice, you have to study. And it, it takes, it takes time like anything else worthwhile. It takes time. 
Number four, design systems, design grids, and rules in composition kill creativity. Again, this is another common theme I see a lot. Somebody wrote me an email once. They were talking about dynamic symmetry, and they were making this statement. It's not a rational statement. Design grids do not kill creativity. In fact, they allow you to be more creative. It's the, it's the opposite of this is true. With the harmonic armature, which I recommend every artist and photographer learn when they're starting out learning composition because it's easier than dynamic symmetry, you will, you will, you will quickly, quickly discover that it does not kill creativity. It opens up a, a whole new world when it comes to creating art, and you will feel empowered when you have this knowledge. When I was photographing many years before and I didn't know anything about composition, I felt handicapped. When I learned design, and even though I'm a photographer, that knowledge still came into play when I was out shooting. I'm not saying I use design grids. When I'm shooting, that's up to the photographer. But what I'm saying is that knowledge is indispensable. It's helped me tremendously to learn how to see. And again, as I said, the application is somewhat different in photography than it is in art in drawing and painting. But the idea the idea is still the same. A design grid doesn't kill creativity at all. Number five, design systems and design grids make art appear too rigid. Again, this goes along with number four. No, it doesn't. What it does do, it gives the art visual structure. Kenyon Cox talks about this in the book, The Classic Point of View. You can download it for free on archive.org. I recommend reading the chapter on design. Mapping out a composition on the canvas or becoming a visually literate photographer does not make art appear too rigid. Structure does not make it appear too rigid. That's not how this works. All right, number six. Photographers don't need to study design because they shoot on the fly. I shoot on the fly all the time. But as I just mentioned, learning design improved my visual literacy skills, and that's what it's about. You're learning how to see. You're not born with this. You have to learn. Number seven. All right, so I, I made a little bit of changes here, as I said, because this is the next few ones are about the rule of thirds. So let me go through this. The rule of thirds is the best system of design. The rule of thirds is the best system of design for photographers and artists. The rule of thirds is not a system of design. It's it's a it's a derivative of the harmonic armature. It's one concept, and it is a legitimate concept. And you can start out with the rule of thirds. There's nothing wrong with starting with the rule of thirds, but just understand you have to build on it too. So it's not a system. It is a derivative of a system of design. Number eight, the rule of thirds is used everywhere in advertising. It's interesting. When, whenever I see an article on the rule of thirds, somebody will they'll lay a rule of thirds grid on whatever the art is, whether it's an ad, a Chardin, it doesn't matter. And some things will line up, and that and that's true. That does happen. But it doesn't mean the, the skilled artist is going to limit themselves to that one concept. So you really got to be careful about how you analyze art. Number nine, the rule of thirds grid is derived from the golden section rectangle. I'm not exactly sure where this comes from. The only thing I can think of is that because the eyes are close when it comes in, into photography, like a 1.5 compared to a golden section, which is a 1.618, and the eyes are relatively close, and then if you lay a roll of thirds grid in a 1.5, you know, the, the eyes tend to be somewhat close, but I'm not exactly sure other than that where this comes from. I saw this in a photography book, and I see it all the time in photography circles, but that's simply because the photographer is not trained in design. I, I haven't come across any information that talks about the relationship between the two. If I do, I, I will update my information, but as it stands now, I don't I don't fully comprehend where that's coming from. Like I said, other than in photography when you're comparing a 1.5, which is a the most popular format in photography compared to the golden section rectangle, which is a 1.618. Number 10, the rule of thirds allows the artist to be creative with their compositions. Like I said, there's nothing wrong with the rule of thirds, but the problem with it is that you're, you're very limited into 
where you can place your subject. And you don't have as much control because you don't have diagonal lines, you don't have additional divisions, you don't have any room to play with that grid unless you understand the harmonic armature. If you understand the harmonic armature, then you can build on that. But if you don't have that knowledge, you definitely can't build on it. And it, it, it locks you into compositions. They all look the same. And if you go online and you look at the rule of thirds, and you look at all the images that are related to the rule of thirds, all the designs, they look very similar, if not identical. You just have to be careful. You can start out with it. Don't lock yourself into this one design concept. Build on it over time, and your work will get more sophisticated, and it will improve dramatically in that arena. Number 11, the rule of thirds can be traced back to classical and Renaissance paintings. The way the rule of thirds is interpreted interpreted today when when you look at this stuff online it can go either way and and this is why i'm a little bit back and forth on this yes there is a relationship between the rule of thirds and the harmonic armature and the harmonic armature was used during renaissance times but that's basically the connection the way it's taught today there really isn't much connection so you I, the point being you just have to understand the history of where the rule of thirds is being derived from, meaning the harmonic armature, and you can connect it that way. But when, when you see this information online about the rule of thirds, it always goes back to John Thomas Smith. And I do have a small section in this user's guide on that just to bring it to the surface, but number 11 can go either way. Number 12, you should avoid placing your subject in the center of a composition. It doesn't matter where you place your subject in a composition. What does matter is how it's balanced out. For example, in photography, if you look at Vivian Mayer's work, most of her subjects are in, they're pretty much in the center. It, it's really more about balance than placing it in, in the left, right, or center. And this concept, I believe, comes from the, the idea of the rule of thirds because the rule of thirds pulls your subject out of the center. So you don't want to lock yourself into this generic myth where you can't place your subject in the center because you're just limiting yourself to what, you know, how creative you can actually be. Number 13, you need to be great at math to master the art of composition. This is not true at all. You don't need to understand math at all. Design and art is a physical geometry. Myron Barnstone talks about this in his DVDs. And there is some information in self-published books that, that are saying that you need to understand this. You need to whip out a calculator. It's not true. And Myron Barnstone, like I said, has demonstrated this time and time again. He, on his chalkboard, he'll take you know a piece of string and a chalk, and he'll uh, create all the root rectangles and all the divisions. So you don't need to whip out a calculator or understand math to either use dynamic symmetry or the harmonic armature. Number fourteen, famous photographer quotes are a great source for learning composition. This comes from the photography circles. And I see a lot of self-published garbage on composition in the photography arena. And for a while, there was a trend by one particular pho photographer that kept using photographer quotes to create these user's guides. But all it does is end up making the photographer confused because every quote contradicts the other quote before it. You can't learn this way. It, <laughs> it's nonsense. Number 15, let me wrap this up. Photographers can learn composition from photography websites. No way. Photography websites, most of them are a joke when it comes to learning real art skills. Avoid them at all costs. There's only a few books, that, the few photography books that I recommend. And the ones that I do recommend are not so much on composition. Bruce Barnbaum's books are the best books when it comes to photography. But he doesn't really teach composition either. So the photography arena is severely lacking in this information. And one of my goals with this website is to close that gap. So no, photography websites, Petapixel, F-stoppers, all that stuff you see online. And even those articles on dynamic symmetry you see on those, it's, it's not a good place to learn this information. It's just not. That's going to be it for today. I hope this helps and thanks for joining me.